Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Public Improvement Commission hearing of November 7, 2019. Our first item are the hearing minutes at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on October 24, 2019. Any questions or comments on the hearing minutes? All right, I'll entertain a motion on the hearing minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes from October 24, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to the public hearing continued, our first item is on a petition by RECPV 40 Warren Owner LLC for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public uh, may have had within the following public ways in Charlestown. Warren Street on its southwesterly side at address number 40, northwest of Henley Street. Henley Street on its northerly side, west of Warren Street. This was new business on October 10th, 20, uh, 2019. Had its first public hearing on October 24th, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Highway, Warren Street, and Henley Street, Charlestown, one she did October 18, 2019. Good morning. Good morning. Fred Keeler from H.W. Moore, Civil Engineers. Uh, from the far right is Toby Danta representing the uh, petitioner. And next to me is uh, Tom Bedell from the Project Architect from BH Plus A. Uh, we were at New Business about a month ago. Uh, just uh, to refresh everyone's memory, uh, this is the, uh, the existing building, 40 Warren Street, that uh, Mr. Banter is renovating and uh, improving and putting on an addition. So those were the existing conditions of construction. This is a rendering that uh, Tom's office prepared to show what the uh, improvements will look like when it's completed. Regarding the uh, highway discontinuance, the uh, di discontinuance is being requested in, in order to put a new brick facade on the existing building. The uh, width of the uh, discontinuance on Warren Street is 0 0.75 feet and on Henley Street, 0 0.35 feet. And the total area is about 156 square feet. And even after the discontinuance, the uh, sidewalk will still be obviously at the minimum of what's like 5-4 on Henley and 6-4 on Warren. Yes, minimum of 6 feet on Warren and then a 5 foot 4 on, on uh, Henley. Yeah. Questions or comments on the discontinuance? Just on the opening, I've just got a lot of inquiry about where we are in the process of construction. When's the expected completion date? Uh, end of the year. End of the year? Yeah. By end of December? End of December, yes. Yeah. yeah. We got a little bit of permanent power issue, but we're at uh, end of the year. So the permanent power, basically, we had the crane out there. Yeah, we now have permanent yes. power. Permanent power is That's all set. Excellent. Other questions or comments? Tom? All set. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by RECP B40, Warner Owner LLC, the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public way may have within the following public ways in Charlestown as read into the record by the chair and as shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, Highway, Warren Street and Henley Street, Charlestown, one sheet dated October 18, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by RACPV 40 Warren Winter <coughs> LLC for the vertical dis discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Charlestown vertically above the grades of the sidewalks. The locations are Warren Street on its southwesterly side at address number 40, northwest of Henley Street, and Henley Street on its northerly side, west of Warren Street. This was new business on October 10th, 2019, and had its first public hearing on October 24th, 2019. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, Vertical, Warren Street, and Henley Street, Charlestown, three sheets at October 18th, 2019. And Fred Keeler from HW Moore Associates. Uh, there are two uh, discontinuances proposed. Uh, discontinuance A is for a roof cornice, and it's, uh, it's, it has about a one foot uh, projection along Warren Street and a 1.25 foot projection along Henley. The uh, area of the uh, discontinuance is 312 square feet. Can you just run on the uh, rendering of the new building? Can you just show us? Both the lower and the upper cornices. Yeah, this is the roof cornice. Yeah. 
here on Warren and on Henley, and this is the fourth floor cornice on Warren and Henley. Questions or comments on the vertical discontinuances? Just on the weather uh, factoring, icing, uh, potential for fall, what are, what are we doing to protect the public flow, these cornices? Well, the upper cornice doesn't <coughs> have any chance of something falling because it's sloped back onto the roof. The only area where you might have a small amount of anything accumulating would be on the fourth floor, but it's it's a very minor area. It, this is not as much as the roof corner <coughs> projection. Right, you guys take a look at that. We've been out there. If you don't have anything in place, anything drainage, anything internal drainage. This is only about eight or nine inches projection. It's very small. Where's the water go? The water drips down. Um, Onto the street, through yes. the sidewalk. Yes, it's not diverted. It's not sent back into the building to an internal drain or sent to a downspout system or anything like that. Not at that level, no. At the roof level, it is. It would be an icicles. There should, for something that's that small, there's going to be very little scope for anything to accumulate there. It's quite a windy corner as well, so we're not expecting things to accumulate. Changes per hour to, to evaporate that cold weather or? Pardon? <clears throat> so there are enough air changes. So you tell me there's wind. There are enough air changes per hour so that would evaporate the liquid, the water, if you will. All right. So if you have snow accumulating up there and we get a cold snap, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then we get a warm day, and then another cold snap, what happens? There would be some melting and some refreezing. There's a water. But, you know, once again, it's it's a very small area, and because of the location within Charlestown <coughs> near the harbor, that is a very windy location, so we're not expecting things to accumulate in any, and it's a very narrow area. Uh, maybe we should talk about that. Okay. I think we could also solve that from a property management standpoint, of being able to clean that off, and if there were accumulation, given up certain uh, extenuating standards for weather. I'd like to talk to the engineer about that in further detail. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Todd? We're good. All right. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item contingent upon ISD's uh, final review of the uh, plans. Make a motion to approve the petition by RECP V40 Warren Owner LLC for vertical discontinuance of portion of the following public ways in Charlestown, vertically above the grades of the sidewalk, as written in the record by the chair, as shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, vertical Warren Street and Henley Street, Charlestown, three sheets dated October 18, 2019, contingent upon final approval by ISD review. Second. Okay. Favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by RACP V40 Warner, Warren Owner LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Charlestown, consisting of curb and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as the removal of a driveway <coughs> curb cut. The locations are Warren Street on its southwestly side at address number 40, northwest of Henley Street, and Henley Street on its northerly side, west of Warren Street. <coughs> this was new business on October 10th, 2019, and had its first public hearing on October 24th, 2019. This is as shown on a plan entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Warren Street and Henley Street, Charlestown, one sheet dated October 18th, 2019. Again, Fred Keeler from H.W. Moore Associates. Uh, the, uh, at our new business meeting, the uh, commission had comments as to the extent of the uh, improvements, sidewalk improvements uh, associated with the project. Uh, we followed that up with a site walk and uh, increased the uh, uh, the amount of uh, sidewalk being reconstructed. All the concrete sidewalk along Henley Street will be uh, removed and reconstructed. We are closing, adding some granite edge stone to close off an existing uh, former entrance to the uh, garage. We're also repairing the uh, brick sidewalk to about the midpoint along Warren Street based on the uh, existing site conditions. The remainder of the brick walk on Warren Street is in good, good condition. Uh, other than that, uh, 
we are also coordinating with the street lighting for the new street lights on Henley Street. We've shown those on the plan uh, per the uh, Commission's comment. So just to confirm, where there is brick today, there will be brick in the future. Where there's concrete today, that's confirmed. Yes. yes. Okay. And the curb cut closure is on Henley, sort of at the southern end of the property. Uh, maybe that's southern. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just from the BTD point of view, uh, hopefully a survey has been done of existing signage that's existing out there. So when you remove the street lights and or any poles to do the sidewalks, they go and reinstalled. So make sure that that's part of the DC's and Sigley's uh, scope. Yep. Okay. Other questions or comments on the specific repairs? Todd, all set. Right. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Make a motion to approve on a petition by RECP for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Charlestown, Warren Street, and Henley Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Warren Street and Henley Street, Charlestown, one sheet dated October 18th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item, on a petition by RACPV 40 Warren Owner LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of retail signage and canopies over portions of the following public ways. The Charlestown locations are Warren Street on its southwesterly side at address number 40, northwest of Henley Street, and Henley Street on its northerly side, west of Warren Street. This was new business on October 10, 2019, and it's had its first public hearing on October 24, 2019. It was as shown on two plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, License Plan for Sign, Warren Street, Charlestown, one sheet dated October 18th, 2019, and City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, license plan for Canopy, Warren Street and Henley Street, Charlestown, one sheet dated October 18th, 2019. Again, Fred Keeler from H. Moore Associates. The uh, first plan is for the uh, sign for the proposed, uh, the license plan for the sign. The location of the proposed sign is on uh, Warren Street, uh, just uh, east of the existing garage entrance. The uh, sign will project about 3.5 feet over the six-foot sidewalk, so it's less than the, the, the uh, two-third max, uh, and it's about 12 feet minimum above the sidewalk elevation. And the area we're requesting for the license is four square feet. And mind just on the rendering of the building itself, this sort of That's not a digital sign, correct? No. I was going to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Questions on the sign before going to the canopy? Right. Can you walk us to the canopy? So there are two uh, areas for the proposed canopy uh, along Warren Street and along Henley. Uh, canopy license A is for the Warren Street side. It is about uh, 463 square feet in area. Uh, at, at its narrowest point on the sidewalk, it's six feet, and the uh, canopy would project four feet over the sidewalk, so it meets the two thirds. And along uh, Henley Street, <coughs> Canopy license B is uh, narrow, it's only a uh, 56 square foot area, and that only uh, projects about 0 0.75 feet over the uh, Henley Street Walk. Questions on the uh, canopy road sign? Right. Todd? What's that? Members of the public? All right, I'll a motion, sir. Regarding uh, public hearing continued agenda item four, I make a motion to approve a petition by RECPV 40, Warren Own LLC, for granting a projection license for installing retail signage and canopies over portions of Warren Street and Henley Street, as, as more specifically read in the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you so much. 
Moving on to the public hearing, on a petition by the President and Fellows of Harvard College for the granting of a private utility license for the installation of a new subsurface private utility infrastructure within North Harbor Street in Brighton, located generally at South Campus Drive slash Academic Way. This was new business on October 24, 2019, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Private Utility License Plan, North Harbor Street, Alston, one sheet, dated June 30th, 2019. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm <coughs> Peter Kohansky from Goulston and Storrs. I'm here on behalf of uh, Harvard University. I'm joined by Danny Rico and Mark Hanley from Harvard, uh, as well as Mark Younghands from VHB, the project's engineer. Harvard is requesting approval for a private utility license for the installation of hot and chilled water lines within North Harvard Street. This conduit is uh, part of the extension of the utility microgrid uh, for Harvard, which already includes uh, electric lighting and telecommun telecommunications conduits approved by the commission in uh, 2017 in this same location of, of North Harvard. So I'll turn it over to Mark and he can show you the plan. Okay. Um, this is a, a plan of the Als Harvard Austin campus. The uh, science building is right here. Uh, Western Avenue is right here. Uh, we had come to the commission about uh, over a year ago for location of a tunnel here, which was part of the um, centralized uh, heat and electric um, facilities for the campus. They're taking a sustainable approach to uh, supplying energy to their buildings, and this is a part of that. And it's set up to serve a big chunk of the campus. The district energy facility, which is almost done, if you go to the Mass Pike ramp in Austin, it's full size is right over here, and the system that um, it supports runs through Science Drive, which was laid out last year as a public way, and is set up to support other parts of the Austin campus. So this crossing is sort of the next piece of that. You know, we've already had infrastructure set up to come through here to Academic Way, and this gets us across North Harvard Street so we can connect these two Harvard properties. Um, we had come to the commission a year or so ago for the first piece, which consisted of uh, electric and um, telecommunications, and we weren't quite ready for this piece, and now we're ready for this piece. We've coordinated design with uh, Boston Water and Sewer and MWRA primarily because their facilities are the ones that we're going to be interacting with. We're not proposing any changes to the surface, lighting, ramps, because everything's going to stay the same when we're done. We are amending the construction management plan that we currently have in place for um, the campus with this piece. It'll be quite similar to what we had done last time. Uh, that was submitted, um, I submitted it through Amy on the 23rd, if you need me to send it directly to you. The police. Bond, John Harmon at Bond was gonna follow up with you directly. I don't know if you guys have made I was on vacation last week, so. All right. Okay. Uh, and we made some changes along the way. Let me get to the, uh, the giant section. That seems to be the easiest one to see. Um, concrete encasing the drain in the sewer at uh, Boston Water and Sewer's request and increasing the offset to the critical utilities by at least 18 inches below. Uh, this is a true scale section. Uh, and you know this, this is essentially the, the lines that we're proposing which uh, consists of chilled water and hot water. Mark MWRA is, is fine with is fine with you. Well, we're in their process. I mean, we're, um, we've had, we had an initial discussion with them. We're not submitting the 8M design review package until just before Thanksgiving. They're still working on the SOE because they, they want a lot of detail about how we're gonna support the trench. And so uh, Bond Brothers is coming up with that now. And the LMI is subject to MWRA exactly. approval. So that just a couple questions relative to the typical detail. You're looking at a 30 inch cover. Is that what you're showing? Yes. So if that's 30 inches and we have street lighting and traffic signal conduit running down the sidewalk, which is also at 30 inches. In, in academic way, this actually runs up the middle of the street. Uh, yeah. Street lighting should be to the sides. We should be. Your crossing it runs down the sidewalk. Okay, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, so that's 30, BTD's conduit and public works street lighting conduit is 30, there's a problem. Okay, will we show 
we show 33 foot minimum, but if you look at the section, these are the true elevations of the design currently, You've been coordinated with uh, the energy designer. We're actually below it. So we, it's a little deceptive. We show three feet minimum because that's the code. Um, but we're more than that where we have the lighting conduits. Yeah, I can point. see saw the inconsistency between what you're showing on the horizontal versus the typical. So you're telling me the horizontal is correct? The, the way this is shown is the actual elevations that we're proposing. So we can modify this plan before it goes to record to show uh, minimum loss it should off be lighting. 30, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. This is 30, the way it's shown. The BT and street lighting conduit is at 30. You cannot that's be That's correct. Yeah. Right. So we'll be under it. All right. Water is your favorite spot. Oh, yes. Other questions or comments? Doug? Just as long as the plan is updated to show that depth for my water. Members of the public? Okay. I'll entertain a motion on the side. To make a motion to approve the petition by the president and fellows of Carvey College, the granting of a private utility <coughs> license for the installation of new subsurface private utility infrastructure within North Harvard. As shown on the set of plans of the City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division private utility license plan, North Harvard Street, Alston, one sheet dated June 30th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by 255 State Street, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Old Atlantic Avenue, a public way in Boston proper, located on its westerly side at address uh, at the side of 255 State Street, generally between State Street and Central Street, and consisting of new emergency flood barrier infrastructure. This was new business on October 24th, 2019. This is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Old Atlantic Avenue, 255 State Street, a public way in Boston, two sheets dated November 5th, 2019. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Peter Kohansky from Coolston Stores. I'm here on behalf of 255 State Street, LLC, which owns the building located at the southeastern <coughs> intersection of State Street and Atlantic Avenue. I'm joined by Tyler Mirandi from Redgate and Peter Gorey from Commercial Boston Commercial Realty Partners, who are the project's managers, and Phil Moser from SGH, the project's engineer. We are seeking approval of some uh, footings within Old Atlantic Avenue that will um, anchor a flood resiliency barrier that can be deployed um, in the event of flood conditions. This is part of a broader project around the building, almost all of which is on private property, this is the bit that, that encroaches on the, the public way. At the new business meeting two weeks ago, we were asked to follow up on a few different issues. Um, we have revised the plan format um, to make some adjustments uh, to your typical uh, specific repair format. Um, we were asked by Water and Sewer about uh, uti any utility conflicts to confirm that there are none, and we submitted a report along with other supplemental materials from Niche Engineering that confirms that there are no utility conflicts in the areas of this work. Uh, and then there were several questions about, sort of operational questions about the deployment and operation of the building and how the evacuation plan uh, and the deployment plan will make sure that the building gets evacuated properly before the systems are deployed, that people who may have, might have still been in the building can egress the building even after the uh, flood barriers are up, and also so that first responders, the fire department and others are able to get into the building if they need to after the uh, system is deployed. We have submitted a draft flood emergency response plan, which I think, um, which we hope addresses that. We've reached out to um, all of the relevant city departments to continue this conversation and make sure that, um, uh, that the plan allows for those life safety measures. And we can talk more about that. We would request that the commission grants approval of this, this bit of work, these footings in Old Atlantic, subject to working through the other city departments, a satisfactory plan to, uh, for the deployment and operation of the system. So I can turn it over to Phil, who can talk about first about the, the part of the system that's in the public way, and then 
uh, about the egress requirements, especially. Peter, can I make one clarification? Of course, yeah. Sorry, Peter Gorey from Boston Commercial Realty Partners. Just uh, not to correct you, forgive me, but just to clarify, we've reached out to ISD uh, about the the process going forward yep. for the further review. Not all city relevant right. yep. city departments until such time as we're directed how to do so. Right. So I just that's great. Thank you. Clear yep. that we yep. haven't talked to EMS for firey. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Phil Moser. Uh, licensed civil engineer with the firm Simpson, Gumperts and Hager. And I've started with a survey plan just for context, showing the building with Old Atlantic Avenue on the east. On the right side, I've highlighted the work area. And I'll now switch to the specific repair plan, uh, showing the blow up of that. I've highlighted in pink the property line. In this case, we switched orientation and north is to the right. So we're looking at the building head on. Um, this is the one location out of 10 uh, where the proposed flood shield infrastructure um, is proposed to be located on the public way on the sidewalk. Um, the building flooded twice, um, two winters ago, and so in response to that, we've been asked to design these flood mitigation improvements. Um, the flood shields will be stored in the basement and only brought up in the case of a predicted flood based on the storm surge and the weather forecast. And all the anchorages and the concrete and the waterproofing improvements to the building uh, will be flushed with no changes of grade or permanent obstructions. Um, again, these flood shields would be only deployed um, as directed by the flood emergency response plan, which requires approval of the authority having jurisdiction. Um, some specific um, questions that were asked at the last meeting I'd like to respond to. Um, again, uh, there was a question about utility verification. We provided that. There were no conflicts from utilities. Uh, there was a question about the width of the sidewalk and how much the flood shields would encroach on that um, when they're deployed. The sidewalk at this location is 17 and a half feet. It's pretty wide, and the flood shield will only encroach about one foot into that, um, so very minor. Um, in fact, it'll be less than the cafe tables and planters and other things that are around the building. Um, there was also a question of how frequently the flood shields will be deployed and for what duration. And that's described in the flood emergency response plan, the draft that we've provided, which we, we welcome comments and input on. Um, based on historical events, um, we expect it'll be one to two times per year and for the duration of the flood, which could vary, but it could be a few hours to a day. Uh, but it'll be in the owner's interest to remove those flood shields as soon as the floodwaters have receded so they can reopen the building and minimize uh, loss of business for the tenants. Uh, there was also a question about what flood stage will trigger deployment of the flood shields. That's a fairly technical question, but that's described over several pages of the draft flood emergency response plan uh, based on the elevations of the specific door thresholds around the building. Um, and that draft uh, flood emergency response plan also describes the order in which they're proposed to be deployed. Essentially, the, the door thresholds with the lowest elevations, uh, those would go up first. Um, and then the question that was alluded to previously about how emergency personnel will access the building with the flood shields in place and how um, occupants would get out if the need arises while the flood shields are in place. Um, that's addressed to some degree in the draft flood emergency response plan, but again, we'd like to meet with ISD and, and perhaps um, Boston Fire Department, if appropriate, um, to go through the details of that. Our design is based on um, ASC 24, uh, which is the standard for flood resistant design and construction that's referenced in the Massachusetts State Building Code in Chapter 16. And that standard, it's a consensus industry standard, it provides for this type of an installation where the building would be evacuated first. and then and only then could the flood shields be installed. And at that point, the standard, um, it doesn't use the term egress at that point, but it does say you still have to account for uh, the term it uses, emergency escape and rescue openings. You still have to provide those even if you've evacuated the building, just in case there were one or two stragglers left behind. And it defines those, uh, the standard defines uh, those openings. Uh, it could be a window or other opening meeting the criteria of the building code for emergency escape and rescue openings and there's a size defined for those. Um, as we've configured it, the design, 
um, seven of the door op the doors will still be able to swing all the way open. Um, or actually some of them are overhead doors, some are revolving doors, but all of those doors will still be able to fully open. The flood shields are far enough out in front of them, that they don't interfere with opening the door. Um, and then the flood shields are low enough that um, you could step over them. Um, they're lower than the 44 inch height um, as the code def defines um, such a rescue opening. So that's how we've approached the design, but um, again, the flood emergency response plan is subject to the approval of the authority having jurisdiction. So we welcome additional uh, comments and conversation on that. And we also have an, I'm a civil engineer, but we have an architect and a fire protection engineer on our team. And of course the property manager, um, we would propose that would uh, make that whole team available to meet with the appropriate city departments and go through the technical details of the flood emergency response plan before it gets approved and implemented. Uh, but just to recap, for today, we're requesting approval to pour that flush concrete within the sidewalk uh, before the ground freezes. Um, we'd like to get going on that and then um, work through the details um, of the flood emergency response plan um, subsequently. So that concludes my presentation, but happy to take questions and comments. So understood about the building code requirements, and I'm sure Brian will be venting that through ISD. One of my concerns is with Boston Fire, whereas NFPA 241, I think that would come into uh, play with setting up these uh, on the public way and basically firefighting exposure. So I would think that they would be requiring an NFPA 241. Thank you. you can we'll we'll follow that. up on that. Yep. Questions or comments? Yeah. We're going to need to set up a meeting about that. So we can address that. Um, before you enact a full 241 plan, um, it will come up with fire, uh, but I want to have that. Uh, I think I've already instructed where I need you to be looking. Yeah. So we address those items. If we can have them ready to go to talk about when we meet, I'll have no problem setting up that meeting for you. Uh, we should also talk to the uh, EMS as well. Is there a particular person? Should we run that through you and invite them to the same meeting? Or how would you like no, us we to? We don't really. Um, they'll be part of the 241 piece okay. of that as well. So for my for, for meeting with us for the building code, um, I can have them all there at once if you want. Um, I'll get a point of contact for EMS who you should probably be talking to about that. Okay. Um, their structure is, is really through the police department that point, but I'll, I'll get you a point of contact. Uh, the items I spoke to you about on the phone, yep. that I asked you, that, that's what I'm looking for. I understand. Okay, so you, when you do come to us, if you could have those items addressed on a plan of some sort, you could put it as part of the emergency response plan that you're putting together. If you want to talk about it in there at length, that's fine. Okay. Um, the fact, the building code is not going to recognize that the building's going to be vacant. It's not set up that way. So I've already, we already went through that. So. Uh, we want to discuss that further, that's fine. Um, we want to move forward, I can know what you've done. Uh, for the purposes of the commission, that's fine, but um, I'll get everybody all at the table at once if you guys want to come. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll have our complete team. It's, it's good to it's get the engineer, you want your fire, your fire protection engineer and, and, and your architect at, at once, and then I'll, I'll get the other people to the table at the same time. Great, and, and just for everyone's benefit, and I think we mentioned this last time, and if not, I, I think I shared this with you over the telephone as well. Um, we're going to be in construction for several months because of the nature of the winter and obviously a tight site. There's some, um, you know, active restaurants and, and everything in the building and not a lot of room to work. Uh, so we have plenty of time. We haven't even ordered the, the devices. So we have a lot of time to make adjustments if we need to. The work itself is, is the trigger for the, two, the NFK 241. Right. During its impairment during. So that's, we, we just need to define that. Okay. And, see fire and put it at we'll, that point we'll too. bring our contractor to the fore as well then. Um, I think we might move we'll ask. let them tell you what they want for the impairment. Okay. And then they'll, 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 that should guide you the, the 241 piece. Okay. Because generally what, what I'm going to require for the construction manager plan is that 241 approval or document to be attached to the CMP. And not before CFO, but before construction right. commences. Yes. Yeah. So, so we'll approve, they'll approve it before you get to Ed. 
Okay. Right. We want, want yeah. to, we want to, we're going to have to, you're going to need that input to draft it in the first place. Okay. Understood. Other questions or comments? Done. All set. All right. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Uh, Approval contingent upon ISD's final review and sign up. Make a motion to approve the petition by 255 State Street LLC for the making of specific repairs within Old Atlantic Avenue. Boston proper as read into the record by the chair and as shown on the set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Old Atlantic Avenue, 255 State Street Public Way, Boston, two sheets dated November 5th, 2019, continued upon ISD. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank, thank you. All right, moving on to our next item on petition by MCAF Winthrop LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Devonshire Street, a public way in Boston proper, on its easterly side at the rear of 115 Federal Street, generally at Otis Street slash Winthrop Square. This was new business on October 24th, 2019, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, Devonshire Street, Boston proper. One she did October 23rd, 2019. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Kathleen McNeil. I'm here representing MCAF Winthrop LLC, and I'm here this morning with Chris Hodney from Niche Engineering, Dennis Hill from Suffolk Construction, our builder, Curtis Puncher from Ground, Inc., our landscape architect. Uh, just to familiarize the commission with the project, because it helps to put this request in context, uh, this is part of the Winthrop Center project, which is a 691-foot tall project being constructed in the financial district. It's currently uh, in its foundation stage. Part of our design approval and review with the City of Boston for this site included several public realm improvements. One of the public realm improvements is a ground floor connector between Devonshire Street and Federal Street. And I share this only because the specific repairs on Devonshire Street and Winthrop Square Park connect to the idea that the public will traverse through this space on a general basis uh, into the Winthrop Square Park. So the pedestrian easement is along Devonshire Street because we wanted to enhance the sidewalks on that side of the street. Um, they were fairly narrow to date. And through the connector, which is the space I just sent you, the public will be able to enter into a reimagined Winthrop Square. Uh, Winthrop Square is owned by the City of Boston. It's not a Parks Department project. Um, and our improvements will include a sculptural fountain, specialty pavement, benches, accent lighting, uh, and obviously plantings and irrigation. So I'm um, happy to entertain questions or get into the actual engineering plans. Question on the overall project? Right. Want to go to the That would be great. Okay. So the uh, pedestrian easement on Devonshire Street um, it's basically to provide a continuous concrete path travel along the front side of the site. Um, at its thickest, it's about seven and a half feet wide. At its thinnest, it's a couple of inches. Um, and that's just to follow the actual path of travel that someone would take along the street. Um, overall, it is approximately 1228 um, square feet of area. Questions or comments on the easement? Todd? I'll set on this. All right, members of the public? Chairman Osgood and members of the PIC, my name is Doug Meyer. I'm here from the Downtown Boston Business Improvement District, and the Downtown Boston bid is very pleased to support this petition. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion on this item. On public hearing uh, agenda item three, I make a motion to approve a petition by MCAP Winthrop LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Devonshire Street, uh, as more particularly read in the record by the chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. 
Moving on to our next item on a petition by MCAF Winthrop LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, and roadway reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, especially pavement, street lights, street trees, landscaping, irrigation infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, bike racks, seat, uh, seat walls, bollards, decorative lighting, raised crosswalks, driveway curb cuts, and a sculptural water feature with associated infrastructure. The locations are Devonshire Street, generally at the rear of 115 Federal Street, from Franklin through Winthrop Square, and Otis Street, generally at Devonshire Street slash Winthrop Square. This was new business on October 24th, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Winthrop Center, Devonshire Street, Winthrop Square Park, Boston Proper, 16 she May, 2019. Again, Chris Sonny with Ninja Engineering. Um, so, walking through the specific repairs on Devonshire Street, starting from the intersection of Franklin Street, um, we are reconstructing the pedestrian ramp at the corner of Franklin and Devonshire Street on the project side of the street um, that necess necessitates repairing the reciprocal ramp on the west or on the north side also. Um, the one on the west side is currently compliant. Um, moving further down the street, the curb line is being bumped out to better align with the, with the actual roadway itself. It's kind of overly wide today um, and that allows us to provide a planted, well, some trees also um, a furnishing zone with some permeable pavers. Um, continuing on, there is another new pedestrian ramp which will provide a uh, pathway to the park across the street, um, and that's going to be reconstructed. There's actually a ramp there today, but it's being reconstructed. Um, that'll be cement concrete. Um, continuing towards the site. Just a quick question. Yeah. Much more question for Todd. So there's a, a granite curtain that's separating essentially the asphalt from the concrete pavers, is that right? Is that in that, in that particular crosswalk? For the crosswalk? Yeah. Yes. yes. Is that our typical detail when we have? Um, we don't typically have granite pavers uh, in this type of situation. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to have the um, the granite separating the different materials. Yes. So I, I think we can probably. Yeah, this is the same detail that was used for the crosswalks at Millennium Tower. Is this uh, the same detail that was used during the Central Aubrey? That I don't know. Which we're removing? Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, so it's basically asphalt, flush, flush granite curb, and then concrete, and then at flush granite curb, then in this case, pavers. Um, continuing on towards the site, uh, we have the concrete path to travel continuing in front of the, the project site um, with another furnishing zone uh, where we can in front of the building. Um, there is in the street, in Devonshire Street itself, is going to be vehicular pavers. Um, just in front of the park and in front of the new building. Um, and then there is a raised crosswalk, which will cross over um, so to the new park. So what does the vehicular pavers mean? What, what are we talking about here? So it, it's a different section than the, the actual pedestrian pavers. And this is the same, uh, it's the same section of paver that we used, again, in, on so it's Millennium like Tower. So it's loading on the paver? Yeah, so it's got, a, it's got a better, a beefier base underneath. So it should stand up better to the traffic that'll be coming over. It's what you're using at the end of Primal Street. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes, it's what we used on Summer Street and Franklin Street, and it does meet the H20 loading. Uh, it's a four-inch concrete paver. Mm -hmm. um, so continuing that, well, I guess I skipped over the new 22-foot driveway entrance um, going into the uh, parking garage for the building, um, and then there's also another curb cut um, right down at the end of the site. Um, and that is for loading purposes. So could you just point out where the exit access is for the connector? Where's that, where that door, where's that walkway bring you? So that's going to be these doors here, and then so access it's directly across directly aligned street. with that crosswalk. Okay, crosswalk. Yeah. Thank you. Those, all these features are covered in the yellow line. Is that right? Yes. All right. All right. Do you want to take us to the park side? Yeah. So within the park itself, because the park is part of the public way, that's why we're here um, for this. And basically, Starting from the nose, the, the nose of the park um, is being extended out today. There's actually a, a lane, a traffic lane right there to allow vehicles to turn around. Um, that's going to be basically removed, and the park is going to be extended out 
Um, in that area, there will be a concrete path of travel coming from the new pedestrian ramp that we're building across the street, across the nose of the park, and then across towards Winthrop Lane. We'll have another ramp and another concrete um, crosswalk there. Uh, within the park itself, there's going to be a variety of different planters, um, or, sorry, pavers within the park, um, as well as planters with trees. Um, there's also a water feature, which is really the focus point of the park. What happens with the, what, where, where did the Winthrop uh, statue go? Um, the Winthrop statue is actually Robert Burns. And uh, at the request of several community members during our public process, Robert Burns originally resided in the Fenway. So we restored the statue and we relocated it to the Fenway. Last week, it went back to that home. So it's now in its original home. Where in the Fenway? Uh, behind the fire alarm building. The fire for Burns Day. Um, I know, Chris, you've had some back and forth with the Parks Department. Yes, uh, I, they have the plans, they're reviewing them. Okay. We haven't heard back. I do think uh, their expertise on sort of landscape design review uh, is appreciated, so I'm happy you sent them to them, and they may have some subsequent comments over time about, about this beyond what maybe this body's going to be able to provide. It would be great if you just responsive to those. <coughs> Other, de other details within the, about the park that we want to come? No. Uh, do you want to talk about the, the, the uh, southern section of the sort of, or the, can you that section? Exactly, the crossing. Crossway. The crosswalk? Yeah. So, yeah, so we have, th this is going to work as uh, there's the path of travel coming through the park. Uh, there is a sort of large pedestrian ramp going down. Uh, to a to crosswalk that crosses over to an existing ramp um, on the other side of the street that leads to Winthrop Lane. And that's a kind of desire line through the park. And here, because the bus travel, we're just sticking with, there's none of the, not, not the pavers, just concrete. Right, the buses are the reason we're not going with pavers in Hanoda Street. Other questions or comments on this specific park line? You, you listed bike racks. Do, do, have you included any planning for uh, parking scooters, electric scooters? That's an interesting question. I have to be honest with you. No, we have not. Um, as part of the project, we will have what we call a bike valet. So anybody who is using the project will have the assistance of staff to help them bring their scooter or their bike into the garage. But that would be only for members of the project, not the general public. And it does look like, at least on the rendering, you have, you have bike racks that are on the park itself as well. as And what is there the review or there's no? Um, actually, um, I was going to mention, uh, Chris, we, we had talked outside. Um, you had mentioned that you were going to be submitting, um, resubmitting the site plan comments that Phil had for this project. Yes, he'd asked us to confirm, confirm some of the existing conditions. We did that and we're resubmitting that today. Okay. And then it is also wanted to state, for just for the record, we did have a meeting, um, you know, a couple of months ago about in regards to we do have uh, combined sewer facilities. Um, over the, the water feature, and we did decide that, that we were okay with that, as, and we just had to put some stuff in the LMI in regards to that. So, thank you. Other questions or comments? Todd? Yes, All right, members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on Chairman oh, Osgood. Okay, please go ahead. Chairman Osgood and members of the PIC, again, I'm Doug Meyer with the Downtown Boston Business Improvement District, and the bid is, uh, again, so ple uh, please support this petition. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now I'll attend a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the petition by MCAF, Winthrop LLC, for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways, consisting of relocating pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, Landscaping, irrigation, infrastructure, storm drain, infrastructure, bike racks, seat walls, bollards, decorative lighting, race crosswalks, driveway curb cuts, and sculptural water features with associated infrastructure. It's right in the record by the chair. 
and have shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair, Winthrop Center, Devonshire Street, Winthrop Square Park, Boston Proper, 16 sheets, dated May 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you so much. Uh, moving on to our next item, I'm petitioned by 175 Ipswich Street, LLC for the acceptance of pedestrian easement a pedestrian easement adjacent to Lansdowne Street of Public Way in Boston proper on the southerly side of the, uh, the side of 175 Ipswich Street, west of Ipswich Street. This was new business on October 24th, 2019. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, Lansdowne Street, 175 Ipswich Street, Fenway Theater Development, Fenway, one sheet day, September 20th, 2019. <coughs> Chairman Osgood and the members of the commission. Uh, my name is Ruth Bond Sr. I'm here on behalf of 175 Ipswich LLC. I'm here today with Brian Fairbanks and Catherine Lewis, who are the site civil engineers for the project, Michael Lamphere, who is the owner's rep, uh, and Kathleen Brill from Foley Hawaii. Um, at the new business meeting, I actually overviewed the project. I'm assuming that that sufficed and that we can just jump right into the plans that we're the abbreviated version of, sort of, the, of the theater and sort of the overall plan. You don't have to go into detail about it. Uh, okay, so let me just, uh, Catherine, grab one, one plan and then we'll... So as we uh, discussed at New Business, this project is being constructed at the intersection of Ipswich Street and Lansdowne Street on the eastern side of Fenway Park. It consists of, uh, of the construction of a new theater that will accommodate approximately 5,000 people. Uh, improvements to Fenway Park over the existing laundry building and back of house improvements within the laundry building. Uh, and, and new uh, commissary and loading facilities within the park. So purple, and this plan represents the new theater proper. Um, the designated pink area is the so-called bleacher improvements, which would provide an overlook to the bleachers and some uh, concession accessible uh, seats and, uh, and uh, additional gathering spaces. And the gray area represents some of the service improvements that are happening within the laundry building, uh, or the also known as the Fenway Garage. Uh, and we're here today for uh, a number of plan improvements. Um, and I'm going to have Brian Fairbanks um, take you through. Great. Thanks. Okay. I'm Brian Fairbanks with VHB. Um, if it pleases the commission, I'll start with the pedestrian Thanks. easement. Today, today there's an existing five-foot building setback on Lansdowne Street and we are coming before you to formalize that existing five-foot building setback and turn it into a modern pedestrian easement. There will be uh, foundations and blade signs and certain elements within that five-foot building setback but the building itself will not extend beyond that into the right-of-way and the, uh, the easement itself will extend from the, the sidewalk surface grade to 12 feet above that. Questions or comments on the pedestrian easement? Doug? All set on this. Members of the public? All right. I'll retain a motion on the pedestrian easement. Make a motion to approve on a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Lansdowne Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, especially pavement, pavement markings, street lights, street trees, street furniture, storm drain infrastructure, hydrants, bike racks, bollards, and driveway curb cuts. 
Locations are Ipswich Street, generally at address number 175, between Lansdowne Street and Van Ness Street, Lansdowne Street, west of Ipswich Street. This was new business on October 24th, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Ipswich Street, Lansdowne Street, 175 Ipswich Street, Fenway Theater Development, Fenway, four sheets dated September 19, uh, 16th, 2019. Hi, again, I'm Brian Fairbanks with VHB on behalf of 175 Vipsuit Street, LLC. Um, if it's all right with the commission, I'm going to start with Lansdowne and work my way kind of south and east around the site. Uh, so on, on Lansdowne Street, as it says in the petition, we are improving all of the sidewalks within our frontage on Lansdowne Street. Uh, we are maintaining all of the existing street with trees within our frontage with the exception of one street tree, the most easternmost on the, on the project, and that's due to uh, potential conflicts with the canopy and just to give pedestrians a little bit more room when gathering for the theater itself. So as we're walking from east down Lansdowne Street, we are extending the curb out into Lansdowne Street. That's in order to provide a wider sidewalk at the corner of Lansdowne and Ipswich Street. That's where the main entrance of the theater will be. Uh, we are also providing new ADA, ADA accessible ramps on the entire, uh, all, all sides of the Lansdowne Ipswich intersection. And the go and with that, uh, we recently received information from. Uh, the parks department that they would that we are going to have to go for a tree hearing and that has been set for december 5th but they indicated that it shouldn't interfere with uh, the, anything pic related so with that it'll be through this area here where there's the the bump out there will be new vertical granite curb and again it will be all new concrete sidewalk within within the public right of way up from lansdowne street to the face of the building so will that necessitate the removal of the parking up on the opposite curb? Yes. Yes, So it will. that's currently all the loading for the businesses on that side. What have they have they been weighed in on this uh, decision? Uh, there there have been conversations with them. Um, conversations such as where are they going to load? Uh, I'm not I'm not familiar with the um, the conversation. I mean we're we're impacting some. A lot of businesses that are currently exist on Lansdowne Street, and additionally, if you're going to put parking on the right-hand side as you put that neck down on, which will necessitate probably the elimination of parking in front of the House of Blues, which is actively loading and unloading and tour buses, etc. What conversation have you had with them? So, well, well, the, I mean, that, they're a partner in this. Live Nation, Live Nation is a partner in this uh, in endeavor, and the, the neck down is east of the House of Blues loading areas and east of the service access to that strip of, of businesses on the north side. Um, there has been conversations about removal of those seven spaces. They're two-hour spaces. They're not technically designated for service. I appreciate the fact that they're used for service on occasion. but Every they. Day. But, but every day but there um, the two hour spaces uh, the conversations have been had with businesses along Langstown about the removal of the two hour spaces See, yeah, I'm running into the same problem with the construction management plan about this is basically what we're doing with the construction staging and the outreach therein with the construction management plan elimination of parking where the loading opportunities are for the other businesses on uh, Lansdowne Street etc not only that but with your loading Basically, with the construction of the new center, I'm understanding that the loading dock will not be available when the, while the building's under construction. Well, so where, where does that loading happen? So we received some excellent comments from you yesterday on on interim service operations, yep. and and there has been an interim plan that that's been developed. We'd love to sit down and kind of itemize. Uh, orig originally, the the uh, anticipated loading facility we expected would be available uh, come opening day 2020. We recognized, and I think the conversation with you and, and the, C, the contractor was that that's not going to hit, but we have a fallback set of interim service uh, strategies 
that we are happy to itemize and go through your comments that we received yesterday on how we're going to handle trash recycling and deliveries currently right. to the Red Sox during construction. Um, we are and that, that it, and that includes your internal operations of how that ab is. absolutely and and we do have answers to all of your questions um, and and we Good. don't expect that this loading dock is going to be ready on opening day. Um, so, so it's important that we talk through those issues with you. I would also just note that after this week's event, the Spartan, there's been no commitment to special events until uh, next season so that we have time to work through those issues and make sure you're comfortable with them. Right, and one of the other concerns was the special events that occur on Lansdowne Street. You understood. Right? Right, <coughs> yeah. Where does the bowling alley and the restaurants, where do they do their money? Well, I, I, I think, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So if uh, on on Lansdowne and Ipswich, I mean, there's a lot of activity on the corner of Ipswich in front of uh, Lucky Strike. Yeah. yeah. But there are restaurants that are sort of that are not associated with the the, the alley that are on Lansdowne. Is that correct? Yep. That would be awesome. Yes. That. Yeah. Monkey, whatever, Monkey Bar, and others. And if we can't, if that loading can't be accommodated other places, would that is that space? Would the we'll, we'll bump out of the um, lines outside, or I think, I think, I mean, I, I think that basically the, the neck down is a good idea because of the 5,000 capacity and getting people in and out and queuing, etc. That's very important. I think obviously fire ISD is going to have a concern about that, as we did when we went through the uh, House of Blues uh, PIC uh, approvals right. and stuff like that. The issue is coming up with an acceptable location that we can basically offset that. I, I think there's some opportunity. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. But it, it is a concern and it hasn't been addressed. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, so they can require a conversation not just that with, with your team, but also with obviously the, the owners on the opposite side of the street. Right. Yeah. Are you going to set that thing? That's on you. To we, the we'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll take the okay. lead on that. I mean, we'll, the conversations have started, but started we'll continue them. Yeah. 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 And we're happy to meet. Uh, anytime after next week or anytime starting next week. Okay. I appreciate that. <coughs> Brian, anything else on that um, Actually, yeah, I just have um, just, a, just, a, just a general uh, comment about uh, the specific repairs in general. Just I know we had uh, emailed back and forth. Uh, fellow Rocky had made several comments on the site plan yep. review process. So, um, you know, he he told me that you're going to have a meeting with him next week to Correct. go over the, the comments. So, yes. um, but on he may have, he just may have additional comments even if you after you um, make his first initial comments. So, I just wanted sure. to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Anything else on that down before turning the corner? Uh, I just wanted to question? point out one thing. Yep. Just. Uh, at the existing triangle lot today, there are two curb cuts to that lot, and we will be closing awesome. both of them as part of this project. So there's one on Lansdowne Street, and then when I turn to Ipswich Street, we can address that as well. All right. Should we talk about the intersection? The Lansdowne Ipswich intersection? Sure. Would you? Um, so at the, at the intersection itself, we are proposing you know, new crosswalks that will be the enhanced city crosswalks per you know the complete streets guidelines and the we were proposing in the center of the intersection for that to be a thermoplastic pattern outside of that you know it'll still be on asphalt but it will be done with thermoplastic both the both the crosswalk and the pattern within the intersection but looking at the details is that actually a black thermoplastic no, well, with the exact color and pattern, we haven't we haven't finalized yet. But it will be something that you know. I think in that case, it was shown with the thermoplastic would be the the white, and there would be that's the asphalt showing through. You're proposing stamping is that correct? Is? Well, it, yes, it'll be applied with heat. The problem that we have with that is basically there's only one contractor in New England that does mm -hmm. it, so trying to maintain it is difficult. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we may want to have a different discussion on the, the crosswalks are fine, but the, the material and stuff, yeah. we might want to have a further discussion on that. Sure. And on the crosswalks, for the DTF, but some places are putting in ladder crosswalks where there were the more decorative version. Correct. I have that board with me if you'd like me to show it. It's, it it's in the packet. Whatever is referred to, to BTD on that, but uh, just to figure out the final crosswalk design. Correct. 
and then presumably whatever final design you come up with for the thermoplast, you can also review that with DTD. Correct. On that switch? Sure. So similar to what was happening on Lansdowne, we are uh, extending the curb out into Ipswich Street. This is in order to provide a wider sidewalk at the corner of Ipswich and Lansdowne where the main theater entrance is. Uh, the one difference being in this area, we are proposing to have a <coughs> furnishing zone with permeable pavers. There will be the addition of three street trees, and uh, there will also be a new relocated bus shelter. And on the south side of Ipswich Street, we are taking a very similar approach to what the Boston Arts Academy is approving, or has, appro has already had approved. So we will be extending their, their furnishing zone uh, adding a you know some street trees or also be some granite cube seating and that's all happening within that furnishing zone elsewhere it will be standard city concrete sidewalk and as mentioned earlier we are going to be closing the existing curb cut to the triangle lot and uh, as we had started talking about earlier we are proposing a new uh, loading facility that will be for both the park and for the theater as part of that, the existing curb cut, we are proposing to widen by about 11 feet, and that's to be able to accommodate additional loading facilities and trash and recycling. Uh, but again, there is one there today. It's just being widened by about 11 feet, and we are closing two other curb cuts. So hopefully, we're hoping with the, this consolidated loading facility that it'll you know, improve for the overall park and for the, the needs of the theater into one. So I, I know you probably, and Brian, and as far as the building code and the NFPA 241 access, et cetera, I'm more concerned about what's going to occur outside as we reviewed with the House of Blues. Have you met with the district captain from the Boston Police on how we're going to handle traffic specific, you know, being that we're not going to have any parking? What do we do with Ubers, Lyfts, people coming to these shows? We have 5,000 capacity. So has there been any discussion with the district captain for this, this area about the, how this is going to operate? Yeah, we, we have um, had at least a half a dozen meetings with Captain Sweeney uh, on traffic management, both when the theater is operating concurrently with the park, as well as when the theater is operating independently. Um, we haven't laid out a specific detail plan, but it's anticipated that we will have details at the corners of the complex when just the theater is operating. And we've been talking through issues with both the BTD and Captain Sweeney about the issue of geofencing, managing pickup drop off and other activities. Uh, those conversations are continuing, but we've made a commitment to, to have a plan in place prior to occupancy. So it's part of the discussion that when we were going through the approval for the project, uh, as far as in other votes on this with the other lot. Basically, as part of the tra traffic management, BTD needs to be part of that meeting with Boston Police. Okay. As we do with the garden, as we do with other because ultimately it comes down to from an operator very concerned. Obviously, the community very concerned about you know a stadium operating with a 5,000 seat. Uh, they can, how we're going to handle traffic. I think we need to ramp up those discussions. We're happy to coordinate right? that. Yep. Yeah. And Captain Sweeney has been excellent. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a good commander. Uh, minor telecom question. Uh, so uh, you're going to have a lot of folks who are going to be sort of using the devices. Uh, either we need to be thinking about ensuring that there's conduit in the street lights that are put in so that if someday there's a conversion for DAS antennas, that that can be done without disrupting the sidewalk, or that's handled within your building or sort of on the building. I, as so long as it's a plan, I feel like one way or the other. Yeah, I can answer. Oh, either one. So, uh, I'm, I'm looking for yeah, the yeah. <laughs> so it's, No, our street lights will be um, extra conduit will be provided for the sure. smart utilities. Yeah. You want extra power and fiber to run behind your utilities, otherwise it's going to come cut it up. Yeah. That's and, and the Red Sox are also planning to uh, plant devices on the exterior of the building, the just buildings. like they do at Fenway Park. Mm -hmm. Right. So that'll supplement the street light. Anything else we want to cover on this business? Okay. 
no questions or no comments, Mr. Uh, Todd? Just one thing that the project should be continuing to coordinate with the MBTA regarding their bus stop location and design. Yeah. I receive comments on that. Yeah, and that also goes from the, obviously, with the construction project. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I think Peter had that. I gave him a contact for uh, the MBTA bus stops. Yeah, we've, we've met with Dave Carney. Yeah, great. Uh, and I just need to follow with Matt Moran. I asked for uh, the form for relocating the bus permit, but I have not heard back. Right. I didn't either. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Uh, all right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Contingent on parks, disabilities, and MBTA final approval. Yes. Just those. Can we actually just add BWSE too? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, I'll do the motion contingent on water and sewer parks, uh, uh, disabilities, and, and MBTA. And MBTA, final approval. Thank you. Those four. Make a motion to approve the petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the making of specific repairs with the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps. Especially pavement, pavement marking, the street light, street trees, street furniture, storm drain infrastructure, hydrants, bike racks, fallards, and driveway curb cuts. It's right on the record by the chair. And it's shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Ipswich Street, Lansdowne Street, 175 Ipswich Street, Fenway Theater Development, Fenway Four Sheets dated September 16, 2019. All continue upon MBTA, Boston Water and Sewer, Parks Department, and Disabilities. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a canopy and signage over portions of the public ways in Boston proper. Ipswich Street on its northwestly side at address, numbers one, address number 175, southwest of Lansdowne Street, and Lansdowne Street on its southerly side, west of Ipswich Street. This was new business on October 24th, 2019. And this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, License Plan, Ipswich Street, Lansdowne Street, 175 Ipswich Street, Fenway Theater Development, Fenway, two sheets dated September 16th, 2019. Yes. Um, so essentially, it is the same on both Ipswich and Lansdowne, with the exception that on Lansdowne, there's the five-foot building setback, which we're looking to formalize into the pedestrian easement. But the canopy that we're proposing extends about nine feet from the face of the building. It will be, I believe, 14 feet above the surface grade. Uh, also, we're looking to place some illuminated building signs and some blade signs off of the building that project about five feet off of the building. So those, those are in these areas here, the, the blade signs and then the canopy is what's shown in the, the hatched area. So that, it, that goes around the, basically the main entrance to the theater, wraps around from Ipswich to Lansdowne. And canopy is kind of drained. Yes, correct. Questions or comments on the uh, projection license? There's no digital billboards or anything on it as part of this project, is it? No billboards. There is electronic, you know, uh, elements to the signage, but it's non-commercial. It's all on on premise. And they're static. The, the, the Fenway image won't be changing, or the so the the, the ribbon around the canopy is oh, right. uh, text that will be rotating. Other questions? Todd? Uh, the one tree that they're proposing to remove on Lansdowne Street is, yep. has yet to be approved by the Parks Department, so, and that conflicts with this proposed canopy design, so this canopy tree approval hearing. should just be contingent on the tree, tree hearing. Yep. Thank you. Members of the public? Right. I'll entertain a motion on this item contingent upon the results of the uh, Parks Department's tree hearing. On public hearing agenda item seven, I make a motion to approve a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for a projection license to install a canopy and signage over portions of Ipswich and Lansdowne Street uh, as further uh, particularly described in the record by the chair. Subject to uh, resolution with the Parks Department and, and the um, uh, tr tree issue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. 
Moving on to our next item on a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within Ipswich Street, a public way in Boston proper on its northwesterly side at address number 175, southwest of Lansdowne Street. This was new business on October 24th, 2019, and this says shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, License for Temporary Earth Retention Plan, Lansdowne and Ipswich Street. 175 Ipswich Street, Fenway Theater Development, Fenway, one sheet day, September 23rd, 2019. Yes, we're here today for the earth retention, for uh, the support of excavation for uh, basement level for the theater itself. And this would require going into the right of way on Ipswich Street. It actually will not require going into the right of way on Lansdowne. That can all happen within that five foot building setback slash pedestrian easement, but we showed it on both, just not knowing exactly how the pedestrian easement would be handled. And this is uh, going to be steel sheeting. So, in this area, there's met much uh, organics. That the geotech folks looked at that during excavation phase and mitigation therein. Yes, we have a geotechnical, we do have a Hilly and Ultron, our team, uh, they've done a full geotech report that's been shared with the contractor. So what's the mitigation for the odors? I'm sorry? What's the mitigation for the odors? For the odors? Uh, the organic soil removal? To be honest, I, I don't have an answer for that right now. Okay. Uh, we can, we can get an answer for that, yep. Right in that general delimited area on the yep. three different projects, we've had that issue, so. Yep. Other questions or comments? Uh, All set. Members of the public? All right, let me just flag that to the Haley Aldrich team. And I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve on a petition by 175 Ipswich Street LLC for the granting of an earth retention license within Ipswich Street as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thank, Thank you very much. The next item is on a petition by Concepts International LLC for the making of specific repairs within public alley number 438, a public way in Boston proper. Located on its northwestly side at the rear of 18 Newbury Street, generally between Arlington Street and Berkeley Street, consisting of curb and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new groundwater recharging structure. This was new business on October 24th, 2019. And this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plans, 18 Newbury Street, Boston Proper District, two sheets dated September 18th, 2019. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. I'm Don Wiest with the Dane Torpy Real Estate Law Firm here in Boston. With me is Zach Richards of Bowler Engineering and Raman Racky of Concepts International. The proposal for 18 Newbury involves the complete renovation of this retail space. It's becoming a new retail shop and concept. And the principal reason we're before you this morning is that our groundwater recharge system extends beyond the rear property line at the site and into the public alley behind. So with that introduction, I'll turn the presentation over to Zach. Thank you, Don. Good morning. Um, Zach Richards with Bowler Engineering. Um, as Don discussed, uh, the project's going to involve a pretty substantial renovation of the building. Uh, as such, uh, we're required to infiltrate one inch of runoff across the site. Um, given the, um, the site constraints, we're proposing a tank, a stormwater tank within the building uh, to retain that one inch of runoff, and there will be an injection well with an overflow that's located uh, in the rear alleyway. Um, as part of this work, we'll also be resetting the vertical granite curb and uh, repaving the sidewalk in the rear. So I'd like to open it up to the board for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Is this a brand new, is it a new building? No, it's an existing building. So it is? Internal renovation. Internal renovations. And who's gonna be the general contractor? Shaman. It's a uh, shaman. Yeah. Okay. Have they submitted a construction manager plan yet to the transportation department? Uh, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure yet. If not, it, it will be coming soon. Yeah. <coughs> you could get that to be because even though it's an internal renovation, it's a very busy area. Yeah. Understood. Is there any staging that actually happen in in the alley or just the construction? There's no not the construction. Uh, the interior work is going to be staged out of the alley, I guess, 
Uh, no, that's not my understanding. No. Oh. Okay, that's part of the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that will be addressed okay. in the construction yes. management plan. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Todd? All set. All right. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve the petition by Concepts International LLC <coughs> for making specific repairs within Public Way Alley number 438. As read in the record by the chair, it is shown on the set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific <coughs> Repair Plans, 18 numerous for East Boston Proper District, two sheets dated September 18, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Moving on to new business. Our first item is 139 149 Washington Street, Fidelis Way in Brighton. A widening and relocation, pedestrian easement, and specific repairs on a set of joint petitions by Avalon Bay Communities LLC, the Roman Catholic Archbish Archbishop of Boston, and the Boston Housing Authority. Uh, good morning. My name is Michaela DeSantis. I'm with Avalon Bay Communities. Um, here with my colleague Dave Gillespie, John Schmid from Niche Engineering, Guy Busa from Howard Sign Hudson, and uh, Kevin Galgan from Goulston and Stores. So we're here for three petitions for 139, 149 Washington, uh, specific repairs, pedestrian easement along Washington Street, and widening and relocation on Fidelis Way. The site's located along a corridor of Washington Street between Commonwealth Avenue and Cambridge Street near St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Um, the co-petitioners, as you mentioned, it's us, Avalon Bay, the Ro Roman Catholic Archbishop of Boston, and the Boston Housing Authority. Uh, the site's currently owned by the, the church, essentially, and Avalon Bay has it under contract to purchase. Um, we've also partnered with the Boston Housing Authority. They're granting us access to our proposed development through a private way that it currently owns called Fidelis Way. Um, earlier this year, the BHA issued a public RFP for access rights, and yeah, thanks, John. Mm -hmm. We've agreed to an access agreement with them, and also a significant benefits package for residents of the Commonwealth Development, which is uh, the BHA uh, project. All to page right there. Yep. Um, so the project itself consists of 180 rental units in one building, as well as 48 home ownership units um, in another building. At the yeah page north there, and where it's parked currently at one space per unit throughout the entire community. Uh, it's a complicated little site there, and we went through a lengthy Article 80 process. We received BPA and BPDA and Zoning Commission Commission approval earlier this year. Um, I guess at this point, I can turn it over to John to get into more specifics on what we're applying for. Just about clarification, you do not own the property at this time? Correct. When do you expect to do the closing? Um, at the end of next year, ideally. So you're, you're at the commission now looking for the approvals, and you don't own the property? We are trying to, well, no, but we're hoping to also be in the ground by the end of next year. So the current owners have submitted a letter of support for this entire project, and they're also uh, listed as co-petitioners on all of, this, all of this. So that should, and closing is the end of January, not the end of 2020, correct? It depends. On, uh, there are different, there's a range in the contract, so. Okay. We'll want a letter from the Archbishop. Uh, so we have a letter of support from the, from the RCAB right now, and we're working on getting their official signatures in. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. So the, the improvements along uh, Washington Street uh, fall between the, the Cabot, Cabot and Ford's project here and Fidelis Way here, which is a private way. We are proposing to reconstruct a sidewalk to make it a 13-foot um, sidewalk, eight feet of which will be a concrete walkway, poured concrete, and then we'll have a five-foot pervious paver band. Within that, there will be um, six new street trees and new street lighting. Presently, there are no street trees in this area of Washington Street. Um, it's part of the application, too, is the three-foot pedestrian easement, which will fall back here. And that will allow us to construct the, um, the eight-foot concrete sidewalk. The, um, we've done, gone through the notification process, and we have le uh, le emails or letters of support from the BPDA, Boston Parks Department, uh, Disabilities, and all the various city agencies and private utilities. Um, as far as Fidelis Way goes, for Washington Street, John, uh, is the bus stop at the, at, 
So the northern edge of your property, or is it across the? Should we? I don't know. Well, the guy speak to that. Thanks. Guy Boosa, Howard St. Hudson. So there are, there are, um, oh, um, hold on. Uh, Guy Boosa, Howard St. Hudson. Um, bus stops, yeah. <laughs> there are, uh, uh, as part of the St. Gabriel's project, there'll be far side bus stops at, at Monastery and, um, and uh, Washington Street. So uh, it's actually opposite our site on um, Washington, and then it's beyond the intersection on the other side. So the, it'll, it's basically move a little bit further down towards beyond Monastery. Yes, kind of, yes, yeah. far side on each, side. right. Far side. Yeah. Okay. And, we, and, we, and we, we coordinated that in a prior project with the uh, MBTA. Right, perfect, thank you. Thanks. All right, good job. Okay, so uh, Fidelis Way is a private way that's owned by Boston Housing Authority. And essentially, we are widening, relocating that layout here. It's a sorry. It's about a ten-foot widening on the on the uh, project side parcel. And what this will do is it will allow us to uh, provide parking on both sides, as well as access and turning movements into the internal loading dock and parking garage that's within the building. And we'll be reconstructing the sidewalk here uh, with poured concrete and new concrete, uh, new granite curbing as well as some uh, bump outs on the other side at the neighbor's request to help delineate the parking. Uh, so basically we have a 30, from curb to curb, it's about a 38 foot width with two seven foot parking lanes and a 20 foot uh, travel way, 20 foot wide travel way for two way traffic. So um, is this part of a TAPA? Yes. And where does the TAPA stand? Uh, it was submitted yesterday. Submitted yesterday. All right, who's the, who's the who did you submit it to? This is uh, Bill Conway from New York City. Okay. Okay. So Andy's got a copy. That's my, that was my, my point. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions or comments on the caddies with the winery location of the specific repairs? Anything else you guys want to cover? Construction Working on. Yeah, yeah. It's not submitted to you yet. No. Okay. And plus, it's, it's a year yeah. out. Yeah. Yes. So, all set for now. All right. Members of the public. All right. See you guys in two weeks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Our next item is 21-212-222 uh, uh, Stewart Street, Shaman Street, Boston Proper and Earth Retention License on a joint petition by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC. Members of the Commission, my name is Paula Devereaux. I'm an attorney at Pierce Alvin, and I'm here on behalf of Stewart Acquisition 12 and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC. We've been before you a couple times now um, for various actions in connection with the construction of a new multifamily building on Stewart Street at 212 and 222 Stewart Street, and we're here today for the earth retention system. With me is John Schmidt and Neil Howard from Transom, the developer, and John Schmidt, um, who can walk you through sure. the earth retention system. So the support of excavation um, is, a series, uh, is a series of a, uh, steel, a steel sheet piles, that be this green line that's around the perimeter of the building. Um, along Seward Street, it's no greater than six feet out. And the reason why we have that separation is to allow access to remove the existing building foundations that are there that go right up to the property line. Um, on Church Street, we're within the property, and on Shaman Street, we're within six feet of the property line for the same reason with the foundation concerns. Um, and on this side, we're within, we're within the property as well. The sheet piles um, will be cut to be six feet below the sidewalk grade when the project is completed. Um, and I know that uh, Denise has raised some concerns about a hydrant in this corner. So we'll be, when we come back for the public hearing, we'll amend this plan to cut this off, and we'll have a note about protecting and maintaining that hybrid. So it's, it's clear to everyone. All right, great, thank you. Yep. Uh, so that's, that's the gist of that. 
questions or comments in there if that makes sense. No water trust. So we've been through, we have site, um, we have BWC site plan approval, we have groundwater trust approval, we're just, at, we, we need this approval in order to file for the building permit. And the construction manager plan, has that been executed? Yes, it has. It has, I signed it, well. Yeah. <laughs> All set. All right, members of the public. All right, see you guys in two weeks and you'll make the amendment on the, around the hallway. Yes, okay. thank you, great. Thank, thank you so you. much. Our final item of new business is 21-35 West 2nd Street, Athens Street, South Boston, pedestrian easements, vertical discontinuance to specific repairs, projection license on a set of joint petitions by Zero Athens LLC and the Boston Planning and Development. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Uh, with me to my right again uh, is uh, Neil Howard from Transom Real Estate in Zero Athens LLC for this project. Uh, Carlos Skulti from Civil and Environmental Consultants Inc. is the uh, civil engineer on the project. Just give you some quick background. Um, the project site's located at 21 35 West 2nd Street. It's in the lower end section of um, South Boston between Athens and West 2nd Street, kind of where they end up meeting uh, with Dorchester Avenue. Um, the site itself is, as you can see from the board, uh, is a triangular shaped parcel. It's about a little over 10,000 square feet, utilized previously as a surface parking lot, uh, then more recently as a construction lay down and um, parking lot for construction of nearby buildings. Um, in planning the overall project, which I'll go into in a little detail in a minute, um, great care was given to designing a building that responds to kind of the unique triangular flat iron um, shaped parcel and some of the associated site constraints which uh, is in front of the commission today with a few of our petitions. Uh, this includes a unique sawtooth massing design along West 2nd Street which you can see uh, at the top of the building as well as the addition of a significant open space at the prominent intersection of West 2nd Street and Athens Street which you can also see uh, to the left there. I don't know Carlos if you could point to that just the Right at the bottom there. Yep, right there. Thank you. Um, the project itself is proposed to construct a new six-story uh, mixed-use building with 55 residential rental units, as well as approximately 2,300 square feet of ground floor commercial uh, and retail space with related improvements in site, uh, site design, accessibility, open space, and pedestrian access around the parcel. Again, it was previously used as uh, a parking lot. Um, this area is not very pedestrian friendly, so some of the things we're proposing with this project is to improve the streetscape. Um, finally, I'll add that seven of the units are designated as affordable rental units. This is an Article 80 small project uh, application, just under 50,000 square feet. It obtained BPDA uh, board approval in January of this year, uh, zoning approval in February of this year. Um, we're in front of the uh, commission today for uh, pedestrian easements, uh, also vertical discontinuances, which will be a co-petition with the BPDA. Um, we will be in front of the BPDA board next Thursday uh, for their approval to be the co-petitioner, and I believe uh, BPDA legal is here to speak to that if needed. Uh, we also are proposing specific repairs and a projection license uh, for a canopy that will be located over the residential entrance to better define uh, the residential entrance versus the commercial entrance. Um, with that background and detail, I'll throw it over to Carlos. Um, he can go through each of the petitions in detail and obviously happy to answer any questions Thanks that so you may much. have. How many square feet? Uh, 49,000 change, just under 50,000. And, and how many units? 55 rental units, and then there would also be a uh, commercial retail uh, space. This is right around the corner from West Broadway T. Yep. Uh, good morning, Carlos Sculti with Civil Environmental Consultants. Uh, if it's acceptable, I'll walk through the specific repairs. That'll give an overview of the work that we're doing, uh, and then I'll touch on the, the easement, the canopy projection, as well as the vertical discontinuance. Uh, so as Nick mentioned, there is a, uh, a residential and a small retail component. Uh, on the site, the proposed residential entry with the canopy will be located at the east end of the site here. And the commercial entry, the main entry will be at the front and a second entry uh, along the side off of West 2nd uh, with loading access being provided off of Athens Street. 
so as Nick mentioned earlier, uh, under existing conditions right now, the, the site has a curb with a single curb cut entry on West 2nd Street uh, with an asphalt sidewalk. There's no vegetation, there's no planning, uh, there's no street lights or anything to speak of along West 2nd Street today. <coughs> Uh, and along Athens Street right now, there is no curb. Uh, it's essentially uh, an asphalt approach, a curb cut that basically runs all the way from the corner here at Athens and West 2nd all the way to the adjacent uh, property to the east. Uh, so the proposed improvements from a, uh, a public realm approach would be to remove and reset the existing curb on West 2nd Street. We'd actually be closing the existing curb cut entry off of West 2nd Street and we'd be introducing uh, a new uh, perviable paver band, a two foot wide strip along the curb, uh, along with five new street trees uh, that would be in three foot wide tree grades. That's one of the changes that we made uh, in between the original preliminary submission for comment and the formal petition that you have in front of, here, in front of you today. Uh, that was a result of coordinating with the uh, Disabilities Commission and Parks and Recs and, and striking that balance between the accessible path that we have for uh, disabilities as well as the, the appropriate size tree grade set uh, you would want for the, the trees. Uh, so along with the... Uh, it's a three foot wide tree grade. So the way it would work, it's a two foot wide pervious paper band and then it expands to a three foot wide tree grade uh, at those locations. And the concrete path of travel, it's seven and a half feet from the right away to the face of curb. So you have a, a seven foot uh, path. So it would be that two foot uh, band in most places with a five foot sidewalk. And where, and where it narrows down to the tree grades, we're actually gonna be providing the pedestrian easement on West 2nd to allow for an expanded yeah. accessible path. Exactly. Right. With exactly. the sawtooth, there's gonna be a tree well in each one to give the width to pass the travel. Right, so we, even though it'd only be four feet in the uh, in the public realm, which would meet the requirements, you know, we're providing that extra space uh, for added measure. Uh, and in addition to the uh, improvements that we have on the ground level, we're also uh, through the coordination with Boston Water Sewer Commission and our geotechnical engineer on the project. Uh, ultimately to provide the recharge that we needed to to meet uh, BWSC requirements. We ended up introducing new uh, recharge galleys in those sawtooth sections on our private property, uh, but in order to uh, direct the stormwater to those uh, leaching chambers, we have a solid pipe that basically just runs within the first foot of the uh, public right away that would del deliver the stormwater to those galleys. Uh, and on Athens Street, uh, we're proposing new vertical granite curb uh, with an acceptable reveal along the frontage uh, with new concrete sidewalk uh, from the back of curb all the way to the face of the building. Uh, and then we'd have flush curb at the entry to the loading area as well as the entry to uh, two spaces in the rear there as well within the building. Uh, ultimately, that's been designed to align with the existing curb line for the adjacent properties on Athens Street. Uh, and, and continuing to provide the one-way traffic that currently heads in the westbound direction to the intersection here. Uh, as part of the previous development uh, across the street, that intersection was recently reconstructed for ADA compliance, uh, so we're not proposing to make any modifications to the work that was recently done in that location. Uh, so with, with the loading, and you have a flush curve, how does do. that work? How does the loading work? So the, the trucks would pull in here and then they would back into the spaces here. The loading is actually angled in this direction. So the trucks would pull in here, back into the internal space that we have within the building. Uh, I don't recall the exact dimension, but there's enough uh, for move in, for delivery storage. So but, what type of design vehicle is it accommodate in that loading bay? SU-30, WB-40? I'd have to double check. Uh, that was part of an analysis that was done uh, through the small project review. So, so we'd have to double check with the traffic engineer on what that was sized for. And is there a parking component to this? Uh, there is. Building? There's uh, shared use parking, uh, essentially through, I believe, a zip car that would be provided. So there's yeah. two spaces that are provided so, in, inside the building. In so this the, there's no parking for residents? There is. So it's actually an innovative design, um, the first of its kind that we know of. There, it's, a, it's a zip car, but only for the building. So there are two car share spaces only for the tenants of the building. Um, and that was done because of the unique shape of the site, but also because of the location of the site. Um, we worked um, with the zoning process and with the BPDA um, to come up with that system um, based on the unit sizes and the location 
um, to not basically not park it. But again, there's no parking for residents other than a zip car. Correct. Uh, then, well, th there's no parking for the residents other than the, their utilization of those two on-site car shares for them only. And through the community process, how was that received? Um, it was received. <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah. Um, it it was received with um, initially concern, um, <laughs> but after m much discussion and the transom, um, you know, Neil's group and Peter Spelios. Um, there was buy-in at the end of it, um, based on the location, based on some of the site constraints, um, based on uh, basically having um, a, a lease program, which they can do as part of their rental program, where um, folks who um, will rent at this location will not be eligible for resident permit parking. Um, so the idea here is to attract folks who won't have a car and who the rent will reflect that because there won't be a space on site for them. Um, and they would then be basically attracting a certain renter who would understand at the outset that they're not going to be able to park their vehicle on site and they will not have access to park their vehicle uh, through the parking program. So that, that, how, is, how, is that, who, how did that get uh, established about the resident parking? If there's no TAPA agreement for this, how is that coming to uh, play? Um, through our communication with the neighborhood group. No, no, no. no, no. How, how would it be? How would it be it's enforced? In our leases. How would it be enforced? Yeah. So it was. Ref it will be reflected in the leases and in discussions with the neighborhood groups, both the WBNA. So on a public street. Correct. And you're saying in the lease that they cannot utilize. They cannot. They will not be able to access a resident permit parking sticker. So they would not be able to go to well, BTD. That was, that was part of it, so we, we just haven't gotten to that step, but part of the two-fold process, and this is in our zoning decision and it's in the BPDA board memo as well, is that we would work with BTD to have it be basically a no-fly list. They would not be able to go into to BTD here and get a resident permit. Of course, if it's, a, if it's a visitor space or a regular space that's not uh, you know, for residents, they could park there. But the idea here was the kind of belt and suspenders approach. We're doing it privately with our leases and we're also doing it publicly by working with with the BTD, of course. So let, let's kind of formalize that. I think that yep, it might absolutely. be a good, good idea is that you know you engage our planning division, basically on the kind of like a mini TAPA exactly. agreement. And, We'd be happy to do that. And our engineering director, who's sitting here in recording, basically on the loading and uh, you know obviously the parking issues and stuff yeah. like that. Right. So there's no TAPA for small project, but I mean to right. that point we've agreed to that. Through, it's this so been need a to engage our planning folks because if you're telling us that basically they're going to be exempt, but they can't get a, a resident park. That's going to be formalized in MOU. Understood. I just don't think we had gotten to that point yet, but again, it's been in all the approval. Yeah, yep. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> we'll make a note of it and we'll reach out. Appreciate that. So there's no on-site parking? There are two on-site parking spaces. Oh, two spaces. There's correct. No in the loading space, space, correct. No personal vehicle. No personal, correct. Uh -huh. And you can give them zoning for a 55 unit building. And we had full community support as well. When you say that, I, that, that kind of raises a flag too. So the electives are on record yep. in South Boston supporting that. Yes, sir. And the uh, mayor's office and neighborhood services rep for South Boston. Yep. I can, uh, I can. If, if you can get uh, Todd in a PIC. We can provide the zoning decision, which has been approved for Not since the February. Decision. I want the elected uh, response. Well, the elected spoke in support at the zoning hearing, and that's part of the public record, so I can absolutely provide that. And, and like I said, it was, a, it was absolutely a conversation, but at the end of the day, they got comfortable and we, everybody got comfortable. Given the location and, and just, again, the site, um, it just doesn't lend itself to underground garage parking because of the, the site constraints. So, But I understand the concern, and, and that was surely raised during the entire process. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if it, if it hadn't been uh, dealt with. The depth of the, of the commercial loading, does the greenness make sure that you're not going to be backing commercial loading vehicles up and having them block the sidewalk while they're at the I just want to make sure that you can speak to that piece at the public hearing. Sure. Does that make sense? Yep. Do you want the design vehicle you, that's going to be accommodated? Right. So talk to your traffic engineer. And then it seems like. If you're running, a lot of this is leveraging, totally understandably, 
correctly, the red line, the, the path that you have on the sort of the southern rightmost edge on the port, yep. that's, a, that's a path that allows residents to be able to sort of come out the main entrance and then come down to Athens. Oh, Street. on on the back side there, uh, I think that was done for constructability. So there's a bit of a setback. There's going to be gates on both sides, uh, so it's basically just maintenance access. It's not intended not to be used for pedestrian or public access. We don't have one prepared at this point. Uh, ultimately, that's something that needs to still be prepared and submitted. Just so you know, it is a requirement. So that it's a small or large project. OK. Uh, no, it, it's fairly straightforward on the work that we're doing in the public realm. Uh, and then I know there was a question from Parks on uh, on the tree species and the caliper. Uh, so we're working on finalizing that with the arc, uh, with the landscape architect. Uh, so in addition to the work in the public realm, there's also going to be uh, a, a landscaping treatment in this portion uh, of the site, which is essentially going to be the front door. Uh, so there's going to be uh, five uh, street trees essentially on private property, uh, as well as a, a paver design and a landscape element that's really going to enhance that corner uh, much better than it is today. Uh, and that's the extent essentially of the, uh, the specific repairs that we have out in the public realm. And I'll walk quickly through on how those tie into the vertical discontinuance and the <coughs> easement work. So the, the first one there, as we mentioned before, the primary residential entry uh, is going to be at the east end of the site. Uh, so at that location, there's going to be a canopy. Uh, it's going to be provided, uh, I believe, 11 feet, 10 inches off the ground surface. Uh, it projects about three feet out into the public realm. Uh, it's going to be pitched back towards the building, heat traced, so all the drainage will be uh, plumbed internally to the building and routed out to the street through the drainage system. Uh, that's the only canopy we currently have proposed out in the public realm. The vertical discontinuance, the second to six stories, I believe, the building out within the public realm uh, are going to encroach about three feet out into the public realm as well. Uh, so each one of those areas is approximately 11 to 12 square feet in area uh, for a total of about 45 square feet. Uh, and as the site slopes from east to west, uh, they start with 10 feet of vertical clearance uh, to the very bottom of the uh, space, all the way down to about 12 feet of clearance as you get down to the intersection of Athens and West Second. So that complies with the requirements for, for the height. And for the easements, we touched on it earlier. Uh, in order to balance the need for the, the pedestrian access easement that we have uh, along West Second Street, There'll be portions of the easement on private property that are going to provide access for public accommodations for disabilities. Uh, and then along uh, Athens Street, uh, there's also going to be an easement that will provide a, a minimum of four foot, four inches of sidewalk access, uh, partially on private property uh, due to the maintenance of the existing curb line that we have out in Athens Street. So there'll be a, an easement on that side as well. Happy to answer any questions if you have any more. Uh, in, in this direction? Uh, the, uh, so the, the closest crosswalk that uh, currently exists and will essentially be maintained is there will be here. It will ultimately be striped as part of the previous project. And we understand that uh, there's some uh, overlay and some pavement work that's proposed in, in the future uh, at the street as well. So we'll coordinate with BTD uh, to make sure that it gets striped appropriately. Uh, crossing West Second itself. I, I believe at the intersection uh, here at West Second and Dorchester, there's uh, crosswalks in this direction here. Right now, there's an existing crosswalk that essentially goes to nowhere, uh, mid-block there, which, which isn't really the best location for us. So we're just proposing to uh, remove the striping at that location as we're going to be raising the curb and it will be accessible regardless. Is there a ramp on the other side of the street? That was under construction. Okay. Yeah. Are there ramps on your side of that crosswalk? No, there are not. So 
that we put asphalt in the field. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Right. I'll get a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.